I'm Derek Poirier. I'm the West Coast Pastry Chef for Valrona, USA. The reason I chose banana cream pie was probably a big influence from my grandmother. Uh, and I think any pastry chef would say this, that somehow their grandmothers or mothers were involved in their influences in cooking. My grandmother used to really bake her crust very well. And the crust flavor really came through in her banana cream pie. And when I tasted dulce, you get that toasty flavor also, which is why I chose it for the Bavarian cream. So with the banana cream pie, we essentially have um, three different recipes. First of all, we have the sablé, which is essentially the pie crust. We have a uh, Bavarian, which I use to replace the uh, pastry cream, which is typically done in a banana cream pie. We have the whipped ganache, which replaces the whipped cream, obviously. I made like a banana marmalade, which replaces um, just typically fresh bananas when done at home. When we're making this recipe, obviously we start with the sablé, which like I said is a replacement for the pie crust. We do it in two parts, which I find is, works a little easier. We do the initial mixing of the sugar, the butter, the flour, um, and eggs. We bring this together to make a homogenous mixture. The little bit of flour prevents the mixture from splitting. After you have a homogenous mixture, we can add the rest of the flour. There's one little twist that I did to it is I added uh, drage. Essentially, it's just a candied almond. But there's something about the flavor of the, of the drage that I really like. So now that we have the dough finished, we're going to put it onto a piece of plastic. After we have the dough between two pieces of plastic, we are going to allow this to rest in the refrigerator for three to four hours. We've allowed the dough to rest. We're going to roll it out. We have the dough rolled out to two to three millimeters. You can see with the addition of the drage, the candied almonds, we have a very interesting looking dough. For one of the cakes that we're going to be making, it'll be this size. I'm going to use the ring, which is slightly larger than the mold itself. You want to bake at roughly 320 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 160 degrees Celsius, which we believe is the best way to bake a sablé because it's a slower cooking. And we want to make sure that you roast, completely roast everything that's in the dough. Um, quite often, I think chefs bake the sablé too quickly at a too high of a temperature. And quite often you get the outside which is toasted, but you still get the inside which is a little bit white. Step two of the recipes is the banana part of the recipe. So what I've done is actually partially cooked the bananas. And I've also used a little bit of pectin. Um, I've used pectin NH, which is, a, which is a reversible pectin, but it just sets the bananas enough that we can use it in a mold and we can use it in various situations. So after you've cooked your bananas, you can put this into any kind of a mold that you like. Today the mold that I used was a flexi mold, um, again which was a little bit smaller than the demi-sphere that I used for the, for the Bavarian cream. So after the bananas are put into the mold, you put the mold into the freezer and allow the bananas to freeze, just so it's easy for you to put this into your Bavarian cream. When you make the Bavarian cream, uh, it's a very classic recipe. We start with an anglaise. For me, the keys to an anglaise are the way that you mix your egg yolks. Um, I find it works a lot better when you mix your sugar and your egg yolks together earlier. This actually seems to relax the lecithin, which is in the egg yolks. And when it coagulates, it coagulates a lot more evenly. So you're going to get a lot more smoother, evenly cooked uh, anglaise. So we finished cooking the creme anglaise. We're going to pass it through a strainer. But now we're going to add the bloom gelatin. Now that we have our anglaise strained, we have our dulce chocolate melted, we're going to make an emulsion. What we're going to do is add a little bit of the cream first. Followed by one more. So here we have the base to the Bavarian cream. The next thing we want to do is allow it to cool to 40 degrees Celsius, around 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The next step after adding gelatin is folding it into your whipped cream. This is actually very important. We need to make sure that we fold the mixture in under 40 degrees Celsius. Animal fat melts at around 40 degrees Celsius, so we have to be careful that we're underneath this temperature when we fold in our mixture, so we don't lose any of the air in the whipped cream. So after you have your Bavarian cream finished, we put this into the molds and then we put this into the freezer and we need to allow this to freeze overnight. The third part to the banana cream pie is a whipped ganache. Uh, I love Opalise for the color. I love Opalise for its very, very milky uh, 
uh, flavor profile. And for me, it's really easy to use it with many different things. It takes on flavors very well. So the process with making the whipped ganache is you have your cream, your invert sugar, your glucose. This gets added to the melted opalis. We do our emulsion. And then the unusual thing with the whipped ganache that we do is you add equal amounts of whipped cream at the end of your ganache. So you essentially have uh, 900 grams of whipped cream, 900 grams of your base ganache. This gets added together, which makes the final mixture. The mixture looks very, very liquid, uh, but if you allow this to crystallize for at least six hours, the mixture be again becomes very thick. The interesting thing with the whipped ganache is because we've pre-crystallized the ganache, uh, the mixture is very, very stable, which allows you to do some very interesting things. Um, the thing that I did today was actually piped the whipped ganache onto a sheet pan, put this into the freezer, and because it's already crystallized, it's very, very stable, and we were able to cut it into little pieces and use it as decor on the Bavarian cream. Uh, to finish off the cake, as you notice, what I did was sprayed it with chocolate. Uh, this mixture was 70% opalese, 30% cocoa butter. Cleans it up, it gives it more of a, more of a flat look. Made it look more like art. For me, chocolate is, it's alive. To me, chocolate is an alive product. It's continuously changing with the atmosphere of a room, with the humidity level, with everything. The design, yeah, I think definitely fits my personality. Uh, I like to have fun. I mean, pastry is very, I take pastry very seriously but at the same time, I love to have fun. Not only is Valrona an amazing product, it's an amazing chocolate. Uh, once I've started working for Valrona, which has been, gosh, almost six years now, um, the company itself is a beautiful, beautiful company. I love the way that they do business. I love the way that they work with farmers. Um, I love how they put so much effort into the product.